in British history. Over her reign, she has come to define notions of service, charity, and consistency. Her commitment to her role and to all of us has been without question and unwavering. She has also demonstrated courage, compassion, and humor. A strong memory I will have of her is her laughter. She was extraordinary. To honor the passing of the Queen of New Zealand and realm countries, we move into a period of official mourning. Flags will be flown at half-mast. Preparations begin for a state memorial service to be held after the official funeral is held in the United Kingdom. While we await details of these arrangements, we anticipate it will be held in the UK in about 10 days' time. I know many will want to share their thoughts at this time. There will be condolence books placed in the Beehive, Theater, uh, Beehive Foyer, the National Library, and Wellington Cathedral. I expect across New Zealand, local arrangements will likely be made. This is a time of deep sadness. Young or old, there is no doubt that a chapter is closing today. And with that, we share our thanks for an incredible woman who we were lucky enough to call our queen. I'm happy now to take questions, Amelia. I do. I think the thing that stands out for me or stood out for me the most at the time of meeting the Queen in person or indeed speaking to her on the phone was just a level of knowledge and care that she had for New Zealand. Uh, I remember gifting her on behalf of New Zealand the first time that I met her, an image of her visit to New Zealand. It was some 50 years prior and a a young woman at that time had caught a Polaroid image of her. And I did not for a moment expect her to recall anything of the moment that photo was taken, but it showed her in the back of a vehicle laughing. Not only did she remember the visit, she could remember what was making her laugh. Uh, that speaks to me of someone who gave a life of service, but also uh, enjoyed the role that she played as difficult as I'm sure it was. Most, most of mine will be images um, that I've seen replayed over the years of her visits. Um, probably one of my fondest memories will be the conversation I had with her during the lockdown period. She called just to check on how New Zealand was doing. Uh, and uh, I remember the conversation well because we, we, we talked very broadly just about the experience of lockdown, how New Zealanders were faring, uh, and she spoke of some of the things she was doing in that time as well, but it was a very human conversation. Well, Jessica, how did you I mean, I'll come across. How I, I did, so I received a message from the... Cabinet Secretary, um, uh, but of course they needed me to be awake to receive it, and so uh, I had a police officer shine a torch uh, into my room at about 10 to 5 this morning. Mm. So that will be determined by the formal arrangements and the invitations, which are yet to be issued, as you can imagine. But uh, broadly, a timeline in advance has been shared publicly. The anticipation is that in roughly 10 days' time, there will likely be a formal service in the United Kingdom. Representatives from New Zealand are likely to be invited to attend that. Our expectation is it will most likely include, for instance, the Governor-General um, and myself. Uh, we expect a relatively small contingent. It was the informality. She was travelling around the country with the Prime Minister of the day and they kept yelling out his nickname as they drove around and, and she found it, I think she found it endearing and she was, she has a full, a full uh, state of laughter in the back of the car hearing New Zealanders yelling out to their Prime Minister in that way. Mm. Yes. Mm. 
Mm. Well, actually, um, just the night prior, I'd been reading some of the news about her state of health, uh, as many will have been observing. Uh, and so when that torchlight came into my room, I, I knew immediately what it, what it meant. Mm. I am profoundly sad. And also on behalf of the many New Zealanders who, of course, you know, for, for me, uh, I've had, of course, my entire life uh, with the Queen, the Queen in it in some form, but there'll be many who will remember much of that 70 years of service, and for them, I imagine, it will, it will represent a, a real end of an era. I know there will be many, many New Zealanders who share my deep sadness today. Yeah, actually, I've been lucky enough to have many interactions with, uh, with King Charles. Uh, the king, uh, like um, his mother, has a deep love for New Zealand. He also has a passion for the environment. He's spoken of climate change long before it, it became a, uh, a globe, the global focus that it needed to be. Um, he also has uh, a, a deep commitment to the well-being of young people and has a number of programs that have been in New Zealand as a result of that. Um, I know that he will, he will continue that affinity for Aotearoa. Not yet, um, but I, I intend to, and of course we will be sending official condolences on behalf of uh, New Zealand, on behalf of the government, um, over the course of the day as well. And so uh, I'm yet to speak to the Leader of the House, but intend to this morning. Uh, usually what you would anticipate is either uh, the recall of Parliament or Parliament sitting as it would be scheduled on Tuesday uh, in order for leaders um, to speak uh, of the passing of the Queen, but also to acknowledge uh, the accession of King Charles III. So we'd expect that most likely to occur on Tuesday and for the House to then rise thereafter. Mm. And so the official uh, uh, state service for New Zealand uh, will not happen until uh, uh, the official service uh, for the Queen in the United Kingdom, and that's what protocol would dictate. So we expect that uh, once we have arrangements or are aware of arrangements in the UK, then we'll set down the plans for New Zealand. In the meantime, we'll have condolence books available here in uh, the capital. Uh, I imagine many w may wish to leave tributes um, Pukiahu will be a place that will be available here in Wellington and I expect around the country people will likely spontaneously find their own places to leave their tributes to. Yeah, most likely uh, we'd look to hold a central uh, event. Uh, um, but um, I imagine what we'd look to is ways that New Zealanders can participate in some form as soon as we have more details on those arrangements, we'll be sharing them publicly. Mm. Mm. Um, not yet, but I intend to. Most importantly, though, uh, it's my role to, on behalf of the government, send those condolences, and that will take priority. And we'll do that over the course of today. We also expect the NZDF at some point will be issuing details of a likely gun salute. Uh, we will be scheduling a moment of silence as well, just working through the appro most appropriate time for New Zealanders to join in, in that moment as well. Uh, there will also be a process, uh, although of course the King uh, takes uh, in his position automatically on the passing of the Queen, there will also be a process that will take place to acknowledge that formally in the UK. Uh, we will then, uh, in New Zealand, uh, also have a proclamation that will be read. Uh, so after the formal process occurs in the UK, there will be a proclamation here in New Zealand to acknowledge uh, formally uh, the role of, of the King. Mm. 
So the proclamation ceremony, which we expect will be in the coming days, uh, is, is just that, very ceremonial. Uh, it will uh, involve the um, Governor-General uh, and I believe the Herald. They will uh, read the proclamation announcing the role of, of the King uh, on, uh, on the steps of Parliament. Uh, as I say, it's, it's, uh, it's more of a, a formality to acknowledge uh, the, the role of the King in New Zealand. And as an aside, it's the one period where the flags will move from half-mast to full-mast and then return to half-mast at the conclusion. I feel very similar emotions, both at the same time feeling a sense of deep sadness but also deep gratitude. Here is a woman who gave her life uh, utterly uh, to the service of others. And regardless what anyone thinks of, of you know, the role of monarchies around the world, there is undeniably, uh, I think here, a display of someone uh, who gave everything on behalf of her people and her people included the people of Aotearoa New Zealand. Mm. Anything further? Yes. Mm. She was a woman who worked into her 90s, I think, despite the fact um, that there had been uh, some discussion publicly around her health and well-being. I think despite that, people will still feel a sense of shock. And that, I think, is a representation of the length of her service. It's easy to take for granted that those who have served uh, on our behalf or been with us for such long periods of time, uh, maybe we never accept that, um, that they may pass and leave us. And I think there'll be a sense of that with, uh, with the Queen. I do, however, consider it to have been a great honour that in my time I've had the chance to meet her, um, talk with her and have a conversation uh, I asked her what it was like to raise children in her role. Uh, and she was someone who would just offer up freely her, her thoughts, but also with a, with a very stoic attitude as well, because she never really had those choices. She had to serve and be a mother and be a grandmother. Uh, so I, I, I learnt much from observing her. Mm. My recollection is... is is that she, she pondered for a moment and, and then essentially said, well, you, you just have to get on. Um, uh, but if I may perhaps conclude with one, one small uh, memory, during the lockdown uh, when we spoke, I asked her how, how she was passing the time and she said that she'd been listening to a radio uh, interview with someone who was a political prisoner confined to a very small sta uh, space for decades. And she said to me, you listen to that and it makes one feel rather small. I think it's easy to believe that when you're in such a role that somehow you get a distance from, uh, from others uh, or from, uh, from what it is to be human. I never, ever got that sense from her. Uh, the fact that she was sitting there as the queen thinking about what it would be to be permanently confined, as others may have experienced, I think demonstrated the thoughtful person that she was. She was extraordinary. Thank you, everyone.